Hello and welcome to The Black Box, where we uncover the roots and rhythms of folk music. Today we're joined by the fantastic duo Has Jack, Steve Chapman Smith and Lynn O'Malley, straight from the heart of Yorkshire. Their music is a journey through stories and melodies, and we're here to explore it all. Steve, Lynn, welcome. Your music is a blend of Americana, roots, and folk. What draws you to these genres, and how do they influence your storytelling? Ooh, going back um, to me being a child, um, my mum and dad used to play um, Johnny Cash and stuff like that, the old um, out, outlaw cowboy stuff. So um, I, I kind of got the influence from that, and I loved the, um, the story songs. And those story songs um, have been going on forever. I mean, people used to use songs to, for the news in medieval times, but uh, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, we, we love stories, and being able to tell stories through music is a, a great thing to be able to do. Um, we particularly like um, stories about uh, the underdog and the un the inequalities of life. Yeah. Songs uh, about justice. Isn't yeah, it? we've got a few protest songs. Um, and Americana, folk and roots just really lend themselves to, to being able to tell that sort of story. The first track you're going to perform is The City Sleeps, <laughs> inspired by your surreal 60th birthday trip to a deserted New York at the dawn of the COVID pandemic. Mm. Will you share this poignant experience with us through a performance? We certainly will. We'd love to. are all clothed TV flickers but all that it shows is the panic stricken faces as the people hurry home the city closes its doors the city closes its doors Tony Poloni he rides the subway He's a talker by nature, hustling makes you that way. Now the carriage is empty, so he mutters along. Subway closes its doors. Subway closes its doors. Lou, Bob, and Patty, they play Rick's guitars. His workshop on Carmine Street, home to the stars. Now the strings lie silent, muted and still. Rick Kelly closes his door. Rick Kelly closes his door. The city is lit up in green. The NYPD are nowhere to be seen. And there's no St. Patrick today. Maria Estevez finished for the day. She covers the statues, locks paintings away. Remaining in darkness till a much brighter day. Museum closes its doors. Museum closes its doors. For 22 years, the skipper known as Jack never missed a shift except when he became a dad. Now the Great Hudson River is closed to all craft. The terminal closes its doors. The terminal closes its doors. 
The city is sleeping Bars are all closed TV flickers But all that it shows Is the panic-stricken faces As the people hurry home The city closes its doors City closes its doors Experiencing the Big Apple in such an unusual state must have been quite impactful. How did this experience shape the writing and emotion behind The City Sleeps? It was a very odd experience. Um, walking around New York with nobody. Um, we've certainly uh, seen it in a, a way that probably would never be seen like that again. Um, Seeing a uh, Times Square and Grand Central Station with nobody in it, it's very, very, very odd. But um, we realize that there are millions and millions of people living in New York and uh, they'll all have their different stories to tell. Um, and they'll have all been impacted differently by the, uh, the lockdowns. And um, so we, we, writing the song, uh, we decided to focus on the individuals and their and their stories. They're all fictional, apart from apart one. From one. Apart, from one. <laughs> apart from one. The only one that's uh, a true person, a real person, is um, Rick Kelly, who um, runs a guitar shop, um, and he makes guitars for all the greats like um, Lou Reed, Patti Smith, and Bob Tom Dylan, Petty. and people like that. Um, and we did find his shop, and uh, it was shut. Had a, <laughs> it was shut. Funnily enough, was. it was shut. We had a little look in the window, but um, but all the others are fictional characters. Um, and it being such a diverse, multicultural city, um, so Maria Estevez um, is a Spanish um, curator of a museum, fictional, um, and Jack, who, uh, who runs the uh, the ship, the ferry across to Staten Island. That was where we went on the ferry across to Staten Island, and I think we were the only ones on it. Yeah, it was very, yeah, very it was odd. Crazy. It was um, but Tony Poloni, who's um. in the uh, second verse, Tony Poloni, um, he's based based on somebody we actually met. Um, we were trying to fathom how the, the subway ticket machines worked, <laughs> and, uh, and, and we met him. And I don't know how we did it, but he managed to dupe us out of a dollar. A whole dollar <laughs> ruined our he was, trip. He was a, a proper hustler on the, on the subway. He was great. He's probably the only person we spoke to the whole time we were there. It reminded he? me of somebody from Taxi. Remember that? Yeah, from yeah, Taxi. yeah, yeah. So he was like a, an Italian New Yorker, you know, New York. But the other odd thing about it was uh, we were there for the St. Patrick's Day parade, which happens every year, and it has done for 250 years, and it was cancelled. So we got there. Um, yeah, so we got there, and it, and it wasn't happening. But what they'd done was they'd lit up all the uh, public buildings and all the museums and Empire State and things like that. They'd lit it all up in green, hence the line, the city is lit up in green, but the NYPD are nowhere to be yeah, seen. There was so. quite a few um, not very happy Irish people there that yeah. had flown all the way over from Ireland for the, uh, for the parade, but there you go. Your harmonies are a signature part of your sound. How do you approach creating harmonies that resonate with the narratives of your songs? Ah, Lynn is the, um, the expert harmony person in Hasjak. Uh, she was in a a trio called Yan Tan Tether, three, uh, three ladies who um, all sang in a cappella, in harmony. And she knows all about that witchcraft. I don't, I just, I just shout. <laughs> 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 no, not really. But, uh, oh, well, harmonies, uh, I, I always think harmonies add texture and richness to, uh, to melody. Uh, I've always loved harmonies. So um, I think... Uh, it just comes naturally, really, to add them to our songs where, where possible. It does, yeah. Your use of instruments like the banjo, buzuki, and harmonica gives your music a distinctive character. What does each instrument bring to the table in terms of contributing to the ambiance of your performances? Oh, we'll start with the banjo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love a banjo. Who doesn't love a banjo? There's plenty of banjo jokes. There's lots of people that don't love a banjo. Um, <laughs> you're not allowed. You're not allowed to not love a banjo. Uh, the banjo is very versatile. Um, 
it adds humor it's it's a uh, it's a it's fun a fun instrument um but it's uh you can create like a really uh, you can create bluegrass sounds and sounds from sort of 1900s america and but you can also make it sound quite melancholy you know if you're doing something in a minor key uh there's quite a mournful sound to a banjo which kind of i don't know resonates with the sort of a whole swamp kind of yeah. thing um but it's 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 great fun to play i love a banjo it is uh, and the bazooki um came along because um i did i started out with a mandolin but <coughs> i got have fingers like sausages and it was just <laughs> just about impossible to play and then i, I discovered um the uh, the bazooki which is like a, a bigger version of the mandolin and uh, i got on with that famously so it sounds like a, a cross between um a bit like a mandolin and um, a bit like sometimes a 12 string guitar. So uh, it, uh, yeah, it can it, sound uh, quite rocky as it well, can't sound, it? It can sound quite rocky as well. So it's, it's a, they're both versatile instruments, mm. really, aren't they? And then the harmonica, um, we were lucky enough to have the amazing John Burr play on our uh, latest album. Yeah, check him out. Um, he played four tracks and he's just the, a wizard on harmonica. Um, and uh, I kind of just basically get by but uh he's he's amazing but it adds uh, like um it's great for the blues tracks it adds that really sort of um soulful blues yeah. um so yeah love a harmonica and also i'm i'm a rubbish lead guitar player so <laughs> i get Lynn to do the solos cuz i can't do that kind of stuff. <laughs> your music is celebrated for its vivid storytelling how do you choose the stories that become the foundation of your songs <coughs> a lot of them um are true to life. A lot of them are true stories. Um, I, I tend to write from the heart. Um, and they'll, yeah, I'd say eighty percent of them are, are, are um, life's experiences, basically, and I'm just putting those experiences across to to the listener. Yeah, we've got um, story songs of you know experiences of our of our own, but also it might be you know there's a, a story that we hear about on the news or. Um, some bizarre incident that's happened that we think, oh, that would make that would make a good song. Um, so they come out of there. Um, we've got a couple of uh, good story songs. Um, Steve's got a great song about um, his idol, who is. Oh, that's a guy called Jackie Leaven. Jackie from a band called Door by Door. So that's uh, like a little tribute song. Um, and then there's a there's a song on our last album um, called Hend. Uh, which is the story of um, when I was traveling. I used to do a lot of traveling and uh, I traveled through the Middle East and I, I met this uh, fantastic woman called Hend and we became friends. Um, and it's all about, because she was um, a Jordanian immigrant and um, she um, she lived in this part of um, Jordan, Amman, that used to be like a Palestin Palestinian refugee camp. Um, so the story... The song of Hen kind of touches on that and touches on the immigrants, but uh, it's very personal as well. So, yeah, lots of personal stuff, lots of uh, quirky songs. So, yeah, it's good. It's just good to tell a story through music. Your song sometimes touches on life's unpredictable nature. Can you tell us what inspired this song? <coughs> um, probably a lot of beer, <laughs> you should imagine. Um, it's just a song about... Um, I guess about me, really, in a way. Um, I, I, I can be unpredictable. I, you know, I want to stay in bed all day one Telling day. Me. And <laughs> <laughs> stay up all night the next day. And uh, so it's, it's, it's kind of about that kind of thing. And um, But always at the end of it, there's, um, there's the lines are, I will never let you down. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm there strong as well. So mm, a bit of a personal one, that one. It's, uh, I don't, people will take it different ways, but, you know, that's good. Next up in the black box, Has Jack brings us Sometimes, a track that delves into the nuances of life's unpredictable moments. With their signature harmonies and heartfelt storytelling, this song from their latest album is sure to resonate. Steve, Lynn, the stage is yours. Sometimes I want to be alone 
Sometimes I wanna hide away. Sometimes I'll stay awake all night. Sometimes I lie in bed all day. Sometimes I really do believe. Sometimes I think I'm gonna fail. Sometimes I believe what I read. Sometimes I have something to say. Sometimes I think I know my mind. Sometimes I just get blown away. Sometimes I believe in me. Sometimes I believe in you. Yes, I do. I will never let you down. I'll never mean to make you cry. I'll never make you feel a fool. You know I'm not that kind of guy. What's going on? Sometimes I think I know the game. Sometimes I wonder who I am. Sometimes, well, I don't know my name. Sometimes I believe in me. Sometimes I believe in you, yeah. But I will never let you down. I'll never mean to make you cry. Make you feel a fool. You know I'm not that kind of guy. All I really want to do is stick around you, loving you. Sometimes I want to be one. Sometimes I want to hide away. Sometimes I still wake all night. Well, I'm bed all day. Sometimes I really do believe Sometimes I think I'm gonna fail But I will never let you down I'll never mean to make you cry I'll never make you feel a fool You know I'm not that kind of guy All I really wanna do Is stick around you loving you you dance. I'll never mean to make you cry. I'll never make you feel a fool. You know I'm not that kind of guy. All I really want to do is stick around you loving you. All I really want to do Stick around you loving you. <laughs> wow. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Your journey from your critically acclaimed debut album, Listerville, to your recent release, The City Sleeps, shows an <clears throat> evolution in your music. What has this journey been like for you both? Uh, well, for me personally, it's been uh, it's been quite a, a learning curve. Um, I've never done much recording before. Steve's done loads and loads over the years. So um, to go from recording in lockdown, which is what Listerville was, um, to well, recording in lockdown was was fine for us because we lived together, so we were able to to do that. But we we did have um, a guest fiddle player. And of course, she had to do everything remotely, so it was a bit of a, a, a challenge. Of on, yeah, um, and because it was the first time I recorded using lots of instruments and things, you know, it was it was quite um, it was interesting for me to see the the recording process. Mm. Um, but but also, also, you you kind of learned quite a few instruments as well, <laughs> didn't you, in that time? Oh, in yeah, a very very yeah. short space of time, I must say. It was, lots uh, of. Uh, People became very creative during lockdown, so uh, yeah, so I learned a few extra instruments. Um, but then for the city sleeps, obviously, uh, we're back to well, normality, if you can call it that. Um, and so uh, we're able to, you know, once we'd got uh, a song and an arrangement, we, we, we could 
go out to folk clubs and singers nights and things like that and try them out and see you know gauge audience reaction and things and we can come back and um adapt them um as as we needed to um yeah it's it's been it's been quite a journey yeah and it's also been interesting because um before we got together i did three solo albums on, on my own which i did more or less on my own and so when when len and i got together and started um, writing, writing songs together that was that was a big change for well you, you hadn't even written many songs did you i'd written respect? thousands of children's songs so <laughs> which i hear every morning <laughs> <laughs> so i had to uh, had to rein that in a bit and get a bit more <laughs> grown up <laughs> yeah so it's uh, it's been interesting in that in that respect where um, you know i've been told what to do <laughs> Such is life. <laughs> Imagine a studio session where time has no bounds, and you could collaborate with any artist from any era, be they past, present, or yet to come. Who would it be? That is such a tricky yeah, one. It is a tricky one. That is so tricky. How long have we got? I think, well, as harmonies are my thing, um, I would say if I'd have had the chance to collaborate with the likes of the Beach Boys, that would have been something special. Um, layer upon layer of harmony. They, they, they were just genius uh, in my mind. Um, things like Good Vibrations, which is, it just goes from kind of one theme to another and changes key and does all sorts. So that would have been quite a challenge, I think, to, to create the harmonies on that. But I think it would have been great fun. But... Uh, I think in terms of just having fun and, and being um, having lots of energy and, and, you know, proper rock and roll, it would have to be the Stones for me. I can just see myself on the maracas <laughs> next to Mick. That would that would have suited me just fine. Uh, really? <laughs> Whoa, it's, it's a really hard question, that. Um, people at... Uh, I, I really admire um, a guy called Steve Earle, so I, I'd, love, um, I'd love to have worked with him. And it's, it's still might happen, you know. He might see this and say, "Hey, Steve, come, come and do some songs with he us." Uh, no, never know, but uh, yeah. So I, I love his kind of uh, songwriting, along with um, Towns Van Zant, people like that. Um, Tom Petty. Tom Petty. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love to be in. I'd love to be in Tom Petty's band. That would have been. Uh, that would have been fun. I think there's just too many. There's too many that. Um, I don't think there's one in particular that no. I could. Um, I could pin down, but uh, so so many. Roundabouts in Nashville brings a humorous perspective to your album. How important is it to include lighter, more humorous songs alongside the more profound ones? <laughs> That's a good question as well. Well, again, before uh, Lynn and I got together, I, I did see myself as a serious songwriter, you know, <laughs> serious. And I did do some pretty miserable songs along the way. Uh, but Lynn's changed, changed that, we, um, oh and for, for the better, because... Uh, you know, it's good to get people thinking, but um, especially live, live people want to be uplifted. So, um, yeah, we, we like my, doing uh, that. Yeah, my heroes in life are people like Eric and Ern and Victoria Wood. So, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't survive without humour. But uh, it is lovely when when you've done a gig and 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 folk gigs can be very serious, and and it gives us a chance to. Um, <laughs> and to play, play um, songs that you know question life's uh, I don't know inequalities and you know all the deeper stuff. But it's lovely at the end of a night when somebody says, "Oh, you know that was all very thought provoking, but we loved you know the way you finished with this song or that song." That's well, we the, generally finish with um, Jackson by um, Johnny. By and Johnny and June. Johnny and June. Right. But it, but it's just nice to put a smile on people's faces. I think. It is, yeah. As we wrap up this session in the black box, Has Jack will leave us with a final melody, Roundabouts in Nashville, a cheerful tune from their debut album that playfully explores cultural nuances. Steve and Lynn, let's end on a lighthearted note. A heartfelt thank you to Has Jacks for sharing your musical stories and to our audience for being part of this journey. Join us next time for more heartfelt narratives and melodies from the folk world. And don't forget to let us know who we should invite into the black box next. Lynn, Steve, please play us out. <laughs> My banjo got stuck then. More gremlins. You nearly didn't get a banjo. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 
I was riding around God's County with an Alabama man. We both guitar slinging, singing where we can. We were chewing the fat and all of that. I almost ran a lie. He laid this nugget on me. My heart went into fright. We got roundabouts in Nashville. Only two or three. to pull over I could scarce believe my ears Yank cars are men for going right curves they've been driving straight for years I know that he'd been drinking it was only two or three not enough to make an Alabama man see circles in Tennessee we got roundabouts in Nashville only two or three together I was stifling in a laugh I had visions of cowboys going round and round losing their cowboy hats coming off with the wrong exit winding up on Lewis Street that's a bad street roundabouts in Nashville hell this I gotta see you we got roundabouts in Nashville only two or three Roundabouts in Nashville. Hell yes, yes, sirree. We got hey. roundabouts in Nashville. Only two or three. Yeah. Roundabouts in Nashville. Hell yes, yes, sirree. Hell yes, yes, sirree. Yes, sir. Yeah. 